So, Gunther, we are here to talk about fears in automation. Mm -hmm. Some of these fears are true and some are not. Yeah. So, we have now prepared a game of cards to talk about that fears. Looking forward to it. So, let's start. Good. So, automation technology is not fully developed. That's what companies or people are, are saying. Well, that is actually not true, right? Um, of course, there's always a continuous development to improve things. But if you look that the first automation projects happened already in the 50s, a long time ago, and that many of these applications that were installed at that time were top-notch technology and have been running for 10 to 20 years. Yeah? True, development always happens. Yeah? We as a company, we also invest a lot into development. And for example, I'm sure that artificial intelligence, for example, will, will add more uh, dimension to the automation part, uh, where actually development is always focusing on making it more reliable, increasing the efficiency, uh, decreasing maintenance time and so on. So I disagree, like I said, technology is there today. We can do something today and help our customers. So I agree with what we are saying. Good, I'll take one for you, this one. <coughs> Automation needs a lot of space. What do you think, Frank? That's an interesting one, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I completely disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because if you look at uh, automated warehousing, uh, fully automatic, you can go up to a height of over 40 meters. Yeah. And think about uh, the volume you can put into such a warehouse. Yeah. So that's one. The other thing is when you look into also in, uh, in other warehouse compared to manual solutions, you need less space because to maneuver into a warehouse, it's not necessary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. An example that I had uh, from, uh, from some customers that before when they were working manual into a manufacturing line, they stuffed as man many pallets as possible close to the working station because they were not sure if the forklift truck would have time half an hour later to bring something. So they stashed actually some buffer, where with just-in-time delivery, when you automate, the flows are all controlled, and therefore, just-in-time is also guaranteed, and you need less space at your workstation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting fear is about automation leads to job losses. Oh. Yeah, that is what I hear before. Honestly, also when I started working into an automation company, uh, my family said, oh, automation replaces people. Uh, actually, I very disagree on that. The, the thing is that today, lots of companies have an issue with labor shortage and they cannot find the people to, to run their business. Therefore, automation is actually a need. Secondly, companies who automate usually are into a growth mode where they say we want to grow, we want to have more throughput and that means that they, let's say the, the, the boring parts of the job or the less ergonomic lifting heavy stuff is then automated and the people can move to a more added value job in the company. So what we see when we implement automation at companies almost always the people stay in place. Yes, that's true. And just to give you an example, yeah, if we look and, and transport, transporting goods into a warehouse yeah, or into a production, you're talking about the guy is driving the whole day kilometers. Mm -hmm. And with automation, he, it's, it's done automatically and this guy can do the job as you just explained uh, with added, added values. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's take this one. Ah, oh, safety. Automation leads to a higher risk of accidents. What do you think, Frank? I don't agree. Yeah. I don't agree that at all. Exactly. And, and why? Um, if you think about automation, you know that, uh, and compared to a manual warehouse, in manual warehouse, you have a human interface which is running like on, 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 on forklift yeah, and driving. And, you, you have, and it can happen that he's doing movements which you cannot control. Mm -hmm. I would say in automation, it's and brackets, impossible. Mm -hmm. and the system has been created with our experts to drive uh, in, uh, only in the sense as it should, 
and all the safety equipment which is on such uh, such automation is ensuring that if no interface happenings or no zero accident, accident can happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And there's regulations to follow as well. There's a reason why there is legislations and regulations to make sure that everything works smoothly and safe, right? Yes. Yeah, agree. Let's take this one. It's about in automated warehouses, repairs are expensive and time consuming. Ah, interesting. Well, it is true that high level automation requires specialists to fix something if something is wrong. And that is a fear that customers have or companies have, mm, a specialist is expensive. But if you look into the total picture, there's a few elements there that are very imp interesting. The first thing is our systems are monitoring themselves and we know so much about our technology that we can predict when something has to be replaced or maintained. So controlled maintenance actually reduces the cost because you plan it. You don't have to call in the cavalry when something breaks down, they have to drive in urgently, which is also more exp expensive on that side. Secondly, when automating, you run your installation and your equipment much smoother. Compare manual forklift truck driving towards automated forklift trucks. We don't hit the brake so hard. We don't go into curves at maximum speed that we can. So the wear and tear of, of uh, our equipment is much lower uh, in the automation. So time consuming, no, I don't agree. It's more predictable and costly, also don't agree. If you look into the total cost of ownership, actually an automated system has a lower maintenance cost than a manual one. And uh, don't forget uh, that a lot of things can be solved remotely. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay, let me take one the further. <clears throat> Let's talk about money, Frank. Automation is expensive. What do you think? Yes, partially true. Mm -hmm. Why partially true? Of course, for automation you have to do an investment. Yeah. Nevertheless, if you look uh, into a calculation of such an investment, you compare it with a return on invest. Mm -hmm. And most of this investment are giving a return on invest on a short notice, because with an automated solution, you can you can uh, avoid a lot of things. Yeah, like uh, you have you, or or increase quality. You have more. Tr you can better tracking track uh, your flows. Uh, you can work in 24 hours. Yeah. So it means there you have to also compare to the automate to the to investment what you are getting. That yeah. that's the first thing. The other thing. Also on investment uh, nowadays, or we are able to do also on, on leasing. So you can, you don't have to buy it. You can also lease it. So which giving you give you the opportunity also to treat your your, your cost and your investment in a different way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I fully agree on that. Yeah, good. So. There are a fear, and um, if we're talking about automation, that automation is only suitable for large companies. Mm. Fully disagree on that. Um, in the past, maybe more focus was put on the larger companies because uh, these larger companies already had a software layer controlling the flows or had an ERP system and so on. So the, the, the step up towards automation was more suitable for them for smaller companies who did not have this software already pre-installed, had to have this extra barrier of investment on top of it. Nowadays, also lots of small companies automate smaller parts of their flows when they are repetitive. Yeah? We have to be realistic though, and that is the number of shifts that a system operates is important for the return of investment. Because our technology is built to work 24 hours, seven days per week. If you have a customer with only one shift operation, of course, the return of investment will be longer. Yeah? But in the end, uh, smaller companies automate. We have small companies and we have large companies, so I don't see any reason to only focus on the big ones. I have the same view on that. Mm -hmm. And looking now, uh, this, this fear was something in the past. Nowadays, also companies are starting with one AGV, yeah. also one guided vehicle, yeah. and and experience, and then increase. So this is really this is what we now see. 
So it's it's not true about uh, only large companies. Okay. Let's take another one. Automation means losing flexibility. That's partially true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's really partially true. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look. If you want to compare when um, for a company which is have a m fully manual warehouse, he has a full flexibility, so the drivers can drive everywhere around, yeah, yeah, and can do their job how they want. But on the other side, that also means that a, a company has no chance to influence the, f the flows, the processes, and the efficiency of his warehouse. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, you, you lose flexibility, nevertheless you have no control of your warehouse. Mm -hmm. And the solution we are creating is we are creating together with the companies to understand their needs and their requirements and create the right solution with the right level of flexibility. Yeah. So that uh, at the end of the day he has a better view on his warehouse, on, on, on his solution and how to drive and track uh, his flows into a, to a warehouse. Mm -hmm. I agree, Frank, and maybe I want to add one thing that is some customers say I only can automate if I know everything. I have to evaluate everything, study everything and I install and then it's fixed and frozen for the next 15 years. Automation solutions today really allow customers to grow with the installation and grow their business. So there is still the flexibility of expanding the solution depending on the needs of the customer or the markets of their end customers. Yes. Automation makes one dependent on the manufacturer. That's a fear existing at companies. Okay, I would say this is partially true, right? Of course, you're dependent on your integrator, on the manufacturer, because you selected a certain uh, technology. Yeah? But you also have to look into the positive sides of that. A solution is always made by our specialists together with the customer to make something specifically tuned to the customer's needs. That means there is a kind of partnership. So I don't call it dependency, we call it usually a partnership because you work together with the customer to develop what he needs now, look into the future as well, and together grow with the solution. That's also the reason we call it long-term partnership. Yeah. And we see a lot of customers which are